Welcome to episode number 50 of Turning $100 into $1 million, the series where I risk a whopping $100 of my money in an attempt for your entertainment to turn into $1 million. Episode number 50, guys, we hit episode number 50, the big 50. So thank you for everyone that's been continuously watching and been a fan of this series. I do greatly appreciate every single one of you. And as always, as a little gift, if you would like free stocks, go ahead and use my link down below in the description. You can go ahead and get two free stocks, one valued up to $1,600 when you go ahead and sign up with Weeble using my link down below in the description. Get free stocks all on me, all free. We do have another stock to look at a little bit later on in this episode. It's been a runner. It's been rallying up like crazy for the last few months. Extremely impressive growth. And speaking of extremely impressive growth, my portfolio is also stabilizing and doing very well as well, despite the turbulence that we've had in the market, the gyrating Dow with President Trump's announcement of over stimulus, which we've covered in many other stimulus videos. So despite that, we are still doing very well. So I'm impressed. Let's take a look at the profit and loss numbers now. So RF, RF maintaining the positive territory, 390 up or 17.96, about 18% up. And then we have DGLY, DGLY down 40.04 or 44.07%. Levi, 416 or 15.91%, Viacom up 1378 or 90.66%, OXLC just down 240 now or 6.02%, so that could very well turn positive shortly and follow the other stocks. Let's take a look at the charts now. We have RF, RF, 25 cents down on Friday's trading day, Monday and Columbus Day is going to be a holiday, so the market's not going to be open. So we're looking at a three-day weekend right here. But Friday is down for the day, 1.92% there, but it is still up for the five days, the one month also, and the six months is actually in the green, which you'll start to see with all the stocks now as the virus happened, or at least the worst of the virus for the market happened several months ago back in March. So you're going to see a lot of more green territory in these six-month charts. We also have DGLY. DGLY is down a cent, then two cents after hours. Five days it is up, so it looks like $2 could definitely be a line of support. It does not want to break $2. It's been pretty resilient with that $2 mark, so that's definitely a great sign. It does bode well for this stock. Remember that spike we covered a few episodes ago. Since then, it did hit did test $2, and in fact, that trading day, I, I'm pretty sure it did go below 2 but it did close above $2, so hopefully $2 is the new $3 for this stock. We're also going to be seeing Levi, Levi down $0.35 cents on Friday, or 2 and a quarter percent Five days, it did have a nice little spike there, where it had a great day, but it did come off those highs just slightly. But it's still closed up for these last five days. One month is also up. Six months is in the green. You can see this notable up, noticeable uptrend here for these last several days and the last couple weeks. Beautiful action there. I like it. Viacom down 69 cents. However, it did have a decent five days. You'd be taking a look at about 3% there for the five days. Then we have OXLC, which has also been dramatically on the rise. You can see that one day, nine cents, no action after hours, but the five days you are looking at about 5% for the last five days. One month even nicer, four and a quarter there. Six months though, it does remain in the negative territory though. Then we have to look at a stock in this episode that's been going bonkers. What is it? Well, it's going to be this stock right here, PEIX, or P-E-I-X, and it's Pacific Ethanol Incorporated. Friday's day had a little bit of a down day. However, you start to see where this stock is soaring if you start to look at the five days, but wait till you see further. Stock up about 13% there for the last five days. One month, they're going to be looking at, I'd imagine that's about double there. Yeah, it's 90 almost 91 percent and look at this six month action surprisingly the action didn't start on this stock really during the pandemic 
but rather as you started to get into July and into August, that's when you started to see the stock start to rally. So what is going on? You get a bigger and better visual there with the year to date in one year. For a very substantially long time, the stock was under a dollar, cheap, cheap penny stock. And you could start to see the madness take place when you go to a for the chart you start to zoom out here. In fact, this stock used to be historically is well that wouldn't be the stock price, so it has had a stock split over the years. It was never above four thousand dollars, I'm quite sure, but you could look into that. It's probably just those numbers relatively because of a stock split. But you do start to see where the stock hasn't been in this territory in years, a few years now. Broke eight dollars easily and had did it ever hit nine? Did it ever hit nine? I don't believe it did, but it did surely say comfortably over eight dollars. So what's going on? What is going on? What is causing this surgence of this stock? Well, here's why shares of Pacific Ethanol skyrocketed 85% in September. So what happened? Soaring 69% just in August. Shares of Pacific Ethanol, or take a simple PEIX, stayed hot in September and climbed 85% according to data from S&P Global Market Intelligence. With the virus cases is continuing to rise. Investors recognize that demand for sanitizers and disinfectants will continue to be strong, as will Pacific Ethanol's high-quality alcohol. Additionally, a strong show of support from Wall Street for the company stock provided investors with additional reasons to pick up shares. So you really got to think outside the box here if you wanted to get in on this stock. That does require some intelligence there. Personally, I don't know that I would have even thought about buying alcohol or ethanol companies in relation to disinfectants and hand sanitizer. You gotta read between the lines for that one. So what a leading producer of high-quality eth- alcohol products, Pacific Ethanol, gained attention from investors in September as virus cases began to surge in many areas after having slowed down over the summer. And as the U.S. death toll surpassed 200,000, as the number of infected people rose through the month, investors recognized the value of the company's decision to increase production capacity. In an investor presentation from September 14th, the company announced that it was expanding annual production capacity from 85 million gallons at the at the end of the recently completed the second quarter to 140 million gallons at the start of 2021. Further inspiration to pick up shares came in the form of a wave of bullish sentiment from Wall Street. Reiterating a buy rating, HC Wainwright raised its price target on the stock to $16 from $3, according to the fly.com. Recognizing the potential positive impact of the company's income statement, Amit Dayal, an analyst at HC Wainwright, commented that the increase in production capacity can take it from an outlook burdened with expected losses to one of profitable growth. So that's where you start to see the thinking, and also the bullish sentiment here from Wall Street. So overall, the stock could have more to go. I don't think this is going to be crashing significantly like other stocks have. This doesn't seem to be a pump and dump per se. There does seem to be some um, lot of a catalyst here, some reasonable explanation to why this stock is doing good. There is a cause and effect here. It's not random. It is explained. So that is definitely a good sign for this stock. And I do think there could be room to go, and perhaps if I were to sell one of my stocks, I might just scoop up shares of this company even. If I were to sell one of my current positions, I could very well scoop up this stock. Let's take a look now at net account value. It does stand at 178.60. It was, it did break the 180s in the last couple days before I shot this, so it did break the 180s again. But now it is 178.60. Market is closed, so it's not going to be changing. But that's what we have here. And if you did enjoy this episode, if you did, give it a big thumbs up, smash the like button. And if you want to see more of it on my channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button, hit the subscribe button. Also hit that notification bell as well. That we're notified every single time I do make a new video. As always, free stocks. Use my link down below in the description when you sign up with Webull. Looking forward to seeing you in the next one.